Hi, I'm Will. I'm Adam. We are here once again in your workshop, Adam. Yep. Uh, today's topic is the lathe. The lathe. So uh, this, first off, we should tell people what you use a lathe for. Every tool in the world, in general, is for taking something large and making it smaller in precise and important ways. Reductive processes. Reductive processes, okay. yes. So the lathe, is, lathe in a machine shop is one of the two tools that do that. The other one is a milling machine. We'll talk about that later. Yes. Now the lathe does it in a circular fashion in which you clamp something into a vise like this using these jaws. And when you turn it on, it spins that work. Okay. And then you can go and act on the work with uh, various tools and cutters and shapers. There are uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Yeah. That allow you to do all sorts of things. Now a lathe is unique in a shop. Why is that? It is the only tool that you can use to build itself. Oh, you can build another lathe from a lathe because you it's, all the stuff is round. Yep. Interesting. Not, more than that, if you want to actually machine surfaces with the lathe, what you can do is you can chuck a milling bit into the jaws, clamp your work to the cross feed table, and use a lathe like a mill. A lathe is absolutely the only tool in the world oh, right. that can build itself from scratch. So this all answers the question of if we have a thousandth precision mill, how did we build that with a hundredth precision mill or a right. tenth precision? The, on the only down. tool you can build itself with Interesting. is a lathe. So it's like a von Neumann machine of the machine shop world. Yes, exactly. Well, there's a couple things that you've done recently to your lathe that well, are kind this, of interesting. I, I want to say that, uh, so uh, I, I literally cut my teeth on the lathe in Jamie's shop at M5. They look pretty good. Uh, um, it's uh, His is what's called a tool room lathe. Okay. Um, which means it's a standard mid-sized lathe. It's a 14 by 40, which means it's it can handle a piece of 14 inch work here and operate on it over a 40 inch length. Okay. Um, this one's made by a company in China called Shenhui. Uh, it's a Shenhui Chieftain is the name of this. And it is my favorite form factor for a basic all purpose lathe. It's not too big, it's not too small. I know it's large, it weighs about 3,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. But for doing special effects work, this is pretty much exactly what any size effect shop is going to need unless they're doing really, really big stuff. You, you, I also like the name, Shenhua, S-H-E-N-W-A-I. You've worn the label off, Adam. I, I have worn the label off, but think about this. It's a Chinese company, and you know when you, you want to say Chinese in French, you say Shenhua. Yeah. So apparently they've phonetically gone it. with the French. It's, it's the Chinese Shenhua. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Um, and basically, so yeah, all these dials over here are for doing things like micro adjustments in the speed of the lathe and the feed so you can cut screws and uh, you can even cut helical stuff. And you, so, so, I mean, the, the main things that you can adjust with this are the position of the blade, the speed of the of the chuck. And the speed of the feed. You can automate it. You can right. automate the movement of this. I didn't get that far. Oh yeah, it's, it's that really sounds cool. crazy, yeah. And, and can be quite dangerous. Oh, excellent. Even because better. if you look away from the lathe for a second, it can send something right through your head. Right. Lathes are terrifying. It's it's yeah, the, they told us when we started no no dangling uh, clothing, uh, no long hair, no rings. No, nothing. Uh, this nothing will stop nothing will stop this. In fact, right there is enough to get you banned from my yeah. shop. Yeah. Because if you turn on the lathe with that in it, it'll, and it'll send fly this, across. I've seen yeah. it go through a wall. That sounds really, really scary. So now, in so order, not a toy. Now, yeah, not a toy. Although the best toy. Um, <laughs> now, uh, moving the tool is something you do, uh, obviously in precise ways. You want to cut something off. You want it to be exactly 0.165 right. inches in length or something like that. So normally, you'd use dials. Now, on the edge of each of the it's uh, like a slide roll down there. Yeah. So you can look down and you can actually set both in inches and millimeters okay. how far you want it to move. But it's actually, it's a lot of work to use the dials. And for the longest time, I used what uh, these is an old version wow. of a kind of uh, uh, analog method. This is called a Trava dial. And you'd clamp this in and it moves and gives you very high degree of accuracy. Wow. And so I, you clamp it onto the rail and as the it rail onto moves. The two rails. Okay. Yeah. And every lathe I've ever used has Travid dials on it. Okay. But recently I realized I could put digital scale. So you took what was previously a, an analog essentially yes. lathe exactly. and made it digital yourself. Yes. This is interesting to me because I wouldn't have thought you could do this. Yeah, well it's actually it's not that difficult. Um, so it's called DRO, digital readout. Mm -hmm. And um, 
What these are are scales. These are called glass scales. They're sealed against dust and debris. That's a good thing. Um, and they've got a piece of glass inside and a reader that moves, and the glass, I believe, has a pattern etched on it or printed on it, and a reader that moves past that can read with a very fine accuracy to uh, the tenth of a thou to a ten thousand. So, so it's like an optical mouse or something like that that exactly just knows exactly right. what the scale it's right. on. Right, so very that cool. when, you, when you zero it out, Right there, that's uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, um, while the ways and the key bearing surfaces are hardened steel, the rest is all cast iron. So attaching stuff to oh. it, once you've clamped it in and you've got your positions right, isn't that hard. Plus, they sell the brackets for these with uh, as slots, so that once you get it close, you can then use a, a, a micrometer to make sure oh. that you have really dialed it in. Okay. Um, so this took me about three and a half hours to put the cross, this, the, the back feed and the cross feed here. The cross feed is still as yet unprotected. Okay. So I haven't yet done any work with cooling fluid in here. I'm going to put a uh, aluminum sheet over this so it is much more prominently protected more from sealed. splashing fluids. That yeah. makes sense. Um, and, and I mean, the thing about a lathe, they're not terribly expensive. I mean, it's, it is an expensive piece of equipment, but it seems like the harder thing is having a place that's big and heavy enough and can support a 3,500 pound yes. thing yes. than it is to actually go out and buy a lathe on Well, on you know, Craigslist I found this one on Craigslist. It was a gr I've been looking, I had been looking for this kind of lathe for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. The 14 by 40 tool room lathe was my ideal form factor. And when I found this one, you can easily buy one of these for $10,000. There are lots of places resell them and that's easy. Um, I managed to find this one for three. Uh, let's see. So not outside the realm of possibility. Not outside the realm of possibility. It needed a little work when I got it and you know, it was missing a couple of key parts. And I also had things like, this is a quick change tool post so I can swap out tools really quickly. That's a really handy I don't have to it. unclamp and that's it. It's just ready to go. Yeah. Um, so I've built this machine up pretty much like all the special effects shop machines that I've ever used. So it's built for speed. Um, one of the things about my shop here is I only get to work here a few hours a month. So when I come in, I want to make the best use of my time, yeah, of course. which is why I invested in something like you, this. If, if you have three hours a month, you want to get every minute of those three hours. Absolutely. So this is a low torque, a uh, high torque, low horsepower uh, motor, right? I think so. Is here, that the way this works? Fast. Ready? Yeah. That's, and if you had had the chuck in there, Joey would be dead right now. Yeah. But what this has is a foot brake. So automatically. So I'm actually built, if I use a lathe that doesn't have this and I want to stop it, I literally start doing start this like, a, like someone who drives a stick getting in an automatic, right? Uh, very cool. That emergency stop is totally key to a machine that's powerful because there are times when you put on the feed and uh, you set it too fast and it just starts, this starts racing for the chuck. Yeah. And when big chunks of machines like this hit each other, they can just tear itself apart. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is a lathe, I guess. Let's, this, is, uh, this is my baby, and now I, I actually I love the luxury of the digital readout the, on the lathe. I've never operated one with such a nice layout before. Well, and it's funny because you don't really appreciate how important it is to just be able to re-zero constantly. You cut something off, you re-zero. You cut something yes, off, you yes, re-zero. You cut something yeah, off, re-zero. Exactly. I'd come up to this, I'd make a mark, I'd make a mark, and rather than having to add, I just keep going to let's say 1.4, then zero, then I go back to 1. Exactly. There we go, you know, and just keep you on You know doing exactly it. where you're at. Yeah. Cool, well thanks so much, Adam. We'll be back with more from the Man Cave later. Until then, I'm Will. See you later. Bye.